Yeah, let's let's get into some NBA because the season kicks off tomorrow. We got two great matchups. Uh, the Bucks start off their their championship reign uh, against the Nets, and then the Lakers and Warriors go at it. But all this right now is being overshadowed by Kyrie Irving. He is, as of right now, away from the Nets completely. He will not participate in any team activities unless he gets vaccinated. Obviously, he went on live last week to say he's not retiring and that he's doing this to be a voice for the voiceless, those who are losing their jobs due to uh, vaccine mandates. Uh, Adam Silver came out today and said, this is not a league issue. This is an issue between Kyrie Irving and New York City because of the mandates in New York. And Kyrie is the only player that right now is slated to miss time due to being unvaccinated. What do we make of a trip? Because again, it, we, we have all the makings of a great NBA season ahead of us, but we're still focused on Kyrie Irving. Let me let me let me start off by saying this, and, and I'm actually I'm I'm glad uh, that Adam Silver actually came out and made that statement. For you knuckleheads out there that think this is the NBA putting a target on Kyrie's back and they want to make an example out of Kyrie and woe is me. I, like miss me with that nonsense. Okay, miss me with that now. This ain't got nothing to do with the NBA. The NBA does not have power over New York City. They do not have power over New York State. The NBA can make a lot of things happen, but they can't tell New York City, they cannot tell New York State to stop having the, the, the vaccine mandate. I'm sorry for all of you people that, that really are trying to push this narrative that the NBA is targeting Kyrie Irving. They are not. They have nothing to do with the mandate that has been placed on New York City. Okay, you cannot go to a gym, you cannot go to a restaurant, you can't go to a damn book club in New York without being vaccinated. That has nothing to do with the NBA. They have not mandated their players to be vaccinated, and they do not make the decisions. I am sorry that Kyrie Irving cannot play home games at, at, in Brooklyn. Y'all know I support the Nets. I'm from Brooklyn. A thousand percent. I'm always going to support everything that comes out of Brooklyn, but there is no target on Kyrie Irving's back. New York has a vaccine mandate. You cannot get into the Barclays Center. You cannot get into Madison Square Garden if you are not vaccinated. That has absolutely nothing to do with the NBA. It has nothing to do with Adam Silver. It has nothing to do with the Brooklyn Nets. There is nothing that they can do in this situation outside of have Kyrie Irving change his stance and go get vaccinated. So I don't want to hear all of that BS or, oh, they just, it's because it's Kyrie and, and they want to make an example out of him I'm, I'm so sick of it already it's, it's a bunch of nonsense that you that y'all that you guys are talking y'all have to give it up and get over it if, and listen i i like Kyrie. i'm a fan of Kyrie. i would love to see him out there because in reality i'm the guy who wants to see the lakers play brooklyn in the finals healthy and go head up i hate when 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 guys are missing key players and they got to go up against each other in the playoffs. I want to see that. So I would love for Kyrie Irving to play, but at the same time, I'm from New York. I'm from Brooklyn. I understand that we were ground zero for the COVID virus. I'm sorry, it is what it is. I film, you know, big shout out to to, to Melba Wilson, who's the head of the, uh, the 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 Small Business Alliance here in in, in New York. I've seen over the past year how these businesses have been impacted by the coronavirus, how much money the city has lost. So I wasn't surprised when they made this kind of mandate because they want to get back to normal. We used to be in the top dogs as far as money goes in New York City. We are the, we are the earners. New York put so much generates so much revenue for this country. It's not even funny. So yes, they want to get back to normal. They cannot do that. You know, if, if if we are still worried about the coronavirus, and again, I am sorry. Yes, it is very unfortunate that Kyrie just so happens to play for the Brooklyn Nets, a team where you have to be vaccinated to enter the arena. Let me just say this one last thing, because you know, for all, you know, even with the oh, he, you know, being the voice in this and that. Let's be clear, okay? If Kyrie Irving was still playing in Boston. If he was still playing in Cleveland, we would not even be having these conversations because it would not matter because no one is making a big deal about Jonathan Isaac down in Orlando. You know, and, 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 and yeah, that was one of the things that, you know, I'm going back and forth with some people. Oh, who's he? I don't know him like that. Well, guess what? Bradley Bill's a superstar. Do you know him? 
Because he's definitely a superstar in this league. He's not vaccinated. But where does he play? For the Washington Wizards, a team that does not have a mandate on vaccines in order for you to enter any place of business in that city. So it's not a big deal. And it would not be a big deal if Kyrie Irving did not play for the Nets. It was, okay, we talk about it, but that's it. It was only a big deal for Kyrie and for Andrew Wiggins because they just so happened to play in the two cities that have those mandates. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's get into that, man, because first of all, for you people who are saying this is some sort of conspiracy against Kyrie Irving, you are completely misinformed. The NBA, the NBA informed the Players Association of all of this news back in June, because at that point, like you mentioned, New York City, along with some other states and other cities and states were starting to bring down mandates Onto uh, into the arenas of how can I actually get people into the arena? And if you don't believe me, look back because for the Knicks and Nets playoff game, all fans had to be vaccinated to go in. That was the beginning stages of the city putting the mandate on everyone who went in. Also, do your research, go back because we've talked about it. The footage is here, it's on tape. The NBA came down and said, all referees need to be vaccinated to enter an arena. Right. So the NBA was working with these cities to try to make sure that everyone was in agreement with how they could move forward. This has nothing to do with Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving has known for months that he either needed to be vaccinated to play or he may not be able to play. And in those months, aside, instead of getting his vaccination, he tried to find exemptions why he could play without getting a vaccination. That time has run out. He has no exception exemptions. He has no other way. So now he's deciding not to play. To your other point, and this is why we know it's not a conspiracy against Kyrie, there are other players in the NBA who aren't vaccinated who will get to play. However, as you mentioned, they don't play in cities that have mandates that require them to have the vaccination. Jonathan Isaac, Bradley Beal, the most notable two. So all this is, is about purely what Kyrie wants and how he feels comfortable moving forward with his life. And that's fine. I completely respect Kyrie Irving. If he does not want to get a vaccination, I completely respect it and I get it. But let's cut out the nonsense. This is not a conspiracy theory. This has nothing to do with Kyrie Irving. This more is, is, is about business. And don't fool yourself, people. Kyrie Irving, one, is not the face of the NBA. The NBA can move on without him if he decides to never dribble the basketball again. Kyrie Irving is not bigger than the game of basketball. All right? Did, did the NBA not survive when Michael Jordan retired? They did. Right. All right. So there will always be other stars and Kyrie isn't even the biggest star in his current era. He's not even the biggest star in his team. So the league in no way, I mean, let's call it what it is. The, why, why would the league conspire to keep Kyrie Irving from playing? Exactly. It, it, it makes no sense whatsoever. That, right. Yeah. Now for the Kyrie supporters, Right. Now, and, and when I say that, I don't want to make it seem like we're bashers because we have been very, um, we've been, we've been very, we, we've shown a lot of praise to Kyrie Irving in terms of all the community work he does. So don't ever get that twisted. We have never criticized who he is as a man, because as a man, he's been a stand-up dude. Always shown that. Facts. But as a player, didn't Kyrie Irving take a week off last week to celebrate his birthday? Didn't Kyrie Irving take... Didn't he take time off and then not alert the team that he was taking time off because he wanted a break from the game? Facts. And for you that think this is a conspiracy, look back. One of the reasons the Nets made the trade for Kyrie, I mean, for, for James Harden, was because Kyrie Irving went AWOL and they didn't know when he was going to come back. If you look back at when they actually traded for James Harden, Kyrie yeah. Irving wasn't with the team. So they had to make a trade in case he never returned. If you look back at all the newspaper clippings and things we talked about on this show, they weren't even sure if he was going to come back last year. Facts. So this has already been bubbling for Kyrie. Mm -hmm. I personally don't think Kyrie wants to play basketball anymore. And that's all right. He's made a lot of money. He is allowed to have other interests away from the game. And I think that's what it is. I think his work in the community is, is taking up more of his time. And I think that's where his passion is. And good for Kyrie. There's nothing wrong with that. We've seen other players walk away from the game at their peak. 
Ricky Williams walked away from the NFL because he felt it wasn't for him anymore. Calvin Johnson walked away from the NFL. Andrew Luck walked away from the NFL because he felt Brown. it wasn't for him. All, all the way back to Jim Brown. Jim Brown, right. So he wouldn't be the first guy to walk away. He probably won't be the last guy to walk away. But let's cut out the, the nonsense. This is in no way, shape, or form a conspiracy. This is no one ganging up on Kyrie Irving. This is Kyrie Irving deciding that the mandates of the city don't fit his lifestyle. And that's okay. That's a-okay, bro. The, let's just not make it about these other things that people want to make it about. Can I, can I say this, Eric? Because this was this is one of the other uh, things that I, that I was you know hearing and I had to go back and forth with. The, 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 the people that want to compare Kyrie Irving to Muhammad Ali. And I'm just, I'm so, I see your face, Eric. I know you're know going to go through this. I'm just, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so disgusted. Do not compare Kyrie Irving to Muhammad Ali taking a stance against the draft and, and, and going overseas to, to, to fight in a war and risking his freedom for what Kyrie is doing right now. I'm, you know, I'm sorry. Like you said, we give we give Kyrie his praise, you know, for everything that he's done off the court. All you know, not everything, but all the positive stuff that he's done off the court in the community, up in the WNBA, uh, George for George Floyd's family, those college students that he paid their tuition. We give Kyrie Irving his props when he is out here doing the right thing. But I cannot sit up here in good faith and not <laughs> make the, the the distinction between Muhammad Ali and, and his stance uh, against the war and the draft to what Kyrie Irving is doing right now. Because again, if Kyrie Irving did not play for the Nets, are we even having this conversation right now? Is this even probably a joke? Not. We're probably not probably having not. this conversation, bro. Just because he, it wouldn't matter because he could still play. It's only a, a, a conversation because he is in New York and, you know, now you want to be the voice of the people, bro. You, you ain't in the same situation as these people in, because guess what? No. The people, people in New York, they, if if they say they're not going to get vaccinated and their job mandates to get them to get vaccinated, they're getting fired and they're going home with nothing. Yeah, it makes the same for you. You still get this is why. Million. This is why the comparison to Muhammad Ali is so off. Muhammad Ali took a stance, right? because of the injustice that was taking place in this country. And as he said, the Viet Cong ain't never called me no, you know what? Kyrie Irving isn't taking a stance. And for those that say, oh, he's taking a stance, he don't want to get vaccinated. He said out of his own mouth, I have nothing against the vaccination. So what are you taking a stance on? Thank you. What, what are you, what are you, like, you can't tell me I have nothing against the vax. I just don't want to get vaccinated. All right, so then you're not taking a stance. That's just a personal choice to not take the, the vaccination. That is not a stance. That So he's not standing up for anything. And to say, I want to be the voice of the voiceless, okay. But by saying that, you're also saying you don't want to be a voice for the vulnerable because there are a lot of people who can't afford to be around you if, you don't, if you're not vaccinated. Because what about that team employee that probably has a sick mother or father at home and they can't run the risk of contracting the virus, right? So again, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but let's not say he's taking a stance. He is not taking a stance. He's personally choosing to not take the vaccine. A stance would be, this is how I feel about it. And that's why I'm totally against it. He has provided no evidence as to why he's against the vaccine. Yeah. At no point, at no point in any time that a microphone has been put in front of him, he has yet to provide us with one reason why he does not want to take the vaccine. On the flip side, I will give Jonathan Isaac credit. I've been saying it for a long time. Jonathan Isaac did his research, very educated, articulated articulated it beautifully. I can't even articulate it. Look at me, I'm, I'm talking ish. But <laughs> he articulated it beautifully when he said, I had the virus, my body produced um Oh, um, my, my body fought it off and, and produced the antibodies for, against it. And speaking with my doctor, if I were to take the vaccine, I could then damage the antibodies that my body's already produced. 
So I completely understood where he's coming from. I had the virus. My body was able to fight it off and produce antibodies. And now I'm good. And I don't want to inject something else in my body that now would mess with those antibodies that I've already produced. Yeah. But Kyrie is, all Kyrie has said is this is a private matter. I don't want to talk about it. I, I have nothing against the vaccine. I just don't want to take it. Oh, by the way, don't tell me this is a private matter and not say it isn't. It's, it's his choice. But you can't use the excuse that it's a private matter when every time you've had an injury, we've known about the surgery and the doctor who's performed it. Yeah. So if those weren't private matters, you getting a vaccine isn't far off from those things either. And how could you be taking a stance if you're trying to keep it private? Like the two, the two don't go together. You can't take a stance, but you want to keep things private. And if you're taking a stance, a stance would also have to be, that means you're telling people that they shouldn't take the vaccine. And that's not what you're doing. Because it, it, it's either you, you're four people taking the vaccine or you're not. That, that's the two stances. Either I'm saying, yes, you should take the vaccine, or I'm saying, no, no, you should not take the vaccine. There's not, a, there's not an in-between thing here. It can't be just, oh, I don't, you know, I'm cool with the vaccine. I'm just don't want to take it. Because that's not, a, you're not taking a stance then. There's neither, not. Again, like you said, you're just making a personal decision of, 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 of you not taking the, 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 the vaccine for whatever your reason is. And that's okay. Because we're all we're we're all in grown individuals, and we are allowed to make decisions for ourselves. But don't sit up here and act like you know you're taking this whole big <laughs> stance, and and and, and 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 you're on, you know, not Kyrie saying that, but you know, for the people that try to make the comparisons to to Muhammad Ali, no, because one, you're not being forced to take the vaccine. Kyrie, we got to be clear. He's not being forced to take the vaccine. Now, if he wants to play basketball professionally in New York, in New York City, yes, he has to be vaccinated. But he is not being mandated. He could have easily said, "Okay, look, I'm not going to be vaccinated. You know, I don't want to miss these games. Can you guys just trade me?" No, because he he'll retire. Well, so, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. but that's what I'm saying. But to go back, that's why it's like, you know, well, what are we doing here then? Because again, you're not being forced to, to take the vaccine. So, you know, it's again, it still wouldn't even be the equivalent to average Joe who might work at a hospital and has to be it and is made. That's being, you know, those people don't have a choice. They have to be mandated to work at the Barclay Center or Madison Square Garden. You have to be vaccinated to work at these restaurants. <coughs> Excuse me. You have to be vaccinated. They don't have a choice in the matter. That's different. You have a choice in the matter. Again, and, I, and that's why I said earlier, it's unfortunate that you play for a team that's in New York City, or if you play for a team that's in San Francisco, it's unfortunate that those are the teams you play for. But even those teams, nobody in the, in, in, in the Brooklyn Nets organization or in the NBA is mandating anyone to get a vaccine. You just made that choice, and, and that's your choice. You, you're welcome to make that choice, but your choice also comes with the consequence of you can't play home games because Adam Silver does not have the authority to say, you know what? No, Kyrie, you're going to still play at the Barclays Center and play all your home games. He can't do that. It's all right. 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 He don't have that power. <laughs> yeah. and, it, and you can't go to the governor and ask him, oh, excuse me, ask her rather, excuse me, because I, I met the governor. She's actually she's actually dope, the new governor. But uh, you can't go and say, oh, could you make an exception for, for, for Kyrie Irving? Because you'd look, first of all, that would just be crazy in itself. To say we're gonna make a we're gonna make an exception just for Kyrie Irving to play basketball in New York City and all these other people in New York City that that have to either lose their job or be forced to take a, take the vaccine whether they want to or not y'all gotta y'all gotta stick with the program. Well, and, and and to the Kyrie supporters, the extreme Kyrie supporters, the extremists, not you know I, I want we are Kyrie mention. supporters as well. Right, we are Kyrie supporters, supporters, but you have the extremists. I'm gonna give you a prime example of what you were just saying, right? So Jay Will, Jay Williams on ESPN, made a statement a few weeks ago that he could see, right? Because Joe Sy, who's the owner of the Nets, has close, politi has close political ties to uh, a, a current gentleman that's running for borough president. And he could see Joe Sy putting up a lot of money and being fully invested in the campaign to get this man elected with the hopes that that man then would lift the restrictions of the Barclays Center, right? 
There's an actual quote. Mm -hmm. But then Jay Will got mad at other opinionists on ESPN for saying that Kyrie was selfish and that what he's doing, his explanation was one of the stupidest that they had ever heard. And now Jay Will's coming to the defense of Kyrie like, oh, you do whatever you want. But I'm like, but hold on. You really thought that there could be a political agenda behind this. You didn't, you didn't see how crazy that sounded, but you're mad at other people for saying this sounds stupid that he would quote unquote sit out be, to be a voice of the voiceless. Like what, what are we doing here? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, you guys are taking these angles that are so far fetched, the conspiracy angle, the political angle, bro. If he want to play basketball, just accept the trade. He could play any way he want, as long as it's not New York or San Francisco. Yeah. And you don't have to get vaccinated. And you don't have to get vaccinated. Now, but that's I guess that's, that's, that's do. I will say this though. I did have a problem with the rule where if you're unvaccinated, you can go on the road to one of these arenas and, and play. I, I that I have a that, problem with because it doesn't I, I, it doesn't yes. make sense. I, I don't understand that. Uh Bradley Bill is a prime example of that because Bradley Bill was in the garden the other night with the Wiz. I don't understand that at all. I don't I don't understand how they even came to that reasoning. Yeah. I don't know if that was something from the I'm assuming that's more from the players association. And I, I still don't understand it, it because there are gonna be so many restrictions on that player hitting the city. Cause as as we've heard in the same thing in the NFL, like when you're traveling to a new city, there are certain restrictions for the unvaccinated players. And I, I just don't even understand how that comes into play with actually showing up to the arena. Like if, according to the NBA standards, if you're unvaccinated and you travel, let's say from one city to the next, you're supposed to kind of be on a lockdown for a certain amount of time before you can actually enter the arena. Yeah. So let's say Bradley Bill and them play in DC on Saturday night and then got a one o'clock game at the garden or at the Barclay Center. Is he eligible to play? Cause he was supposed, right. He was supposed to be on lockdown for a certain amount of time. So is he eligible to play that afternoon game the next day? Like that, that part I don't get, but I'm assuming that's more on the players association side. Yeah. Um, but again, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to say that. I just want to say that, that I, I wasn't cool with that. I didn't, I didn't think that made sense for the league to do that. I think it's, if, if, if you're going to say we can't play here as home team, if we're not vaccinated, then it should be, all the way across the board, no NBA player that is not vaccinated can enter the Barclays Center, Madison Square Garden. Um, I forget the name of the of the Warriors Arena um, uh, out in San Fran, but it just it should be across the board. If you're not vaccinated, you can't enter those buildings because if if Bradley Bill came to New York and just wanted to watch the game, he couldn't go watch the game. He couldn't go. He couldn't go watch the next play. He couldn't go watch the Knicks play. He couldn't go watch the Golden State play. But he's going to be allowed to go inside the building and play basketball if he's if he's the road team. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, th that's gonna that's gonna be a problem all year. Like I said, because there are certain there are certain uh, mandates that they do have in place for those players, and I just don't know how that's gonna work um, when guys are playing back to back. So when they got to play a you know a afternoon game after a night game, that's gonna be interesting to see how that plays out.